Welcome back to another Create Mon tutorial. Today we're going over a coarse flower, coarse fruit farm that I made and already implemented in my survival world. We have two that we're going to go over. They are the exact same concept. This one is just double the size as this one. Um, but this smaller one gets us about 300 coarse flower and coarse fruit per hour. This one is going to be close to double that with a six, five to 600 of each of those. It requires zero stress units. It runs solely off of this minecart contraption that just goes back and forth all the way up, breaking all of the chorus flowers, replanting them so that they can grow a little bit more. To briefly go over why this farm works the way it does and why some earlier versions didn't work as well, I want to talk about how you mine and farm chorus flowers. For the people that don't care, uh, check the chapters of the video for how to place down and use the schematic or just go straight to the block by block tutorial where I'll build this alongside you. But for the people that do care, the chorus flowers, as you can see, grow pretty normally. I, ha I have a bunch of testing of reasons why it won't grow at all if it's only two blocks tall and when it's three blocks tall and they're encased, when they grow, they will only grow one block on either side. That is because they don't like growing in this one block radius around the edges of the walls. So if we, let's say, put a wall here and on this other side, it will be much less likely to grow to either side there and have a higher chance of just turning into a sad chorus flower. So as you can see, it won't just grow to these other sides here, but if we remove these again, it will regrow and much, much more which is why we have this five by five area here, or I guess five by three area, but it doesn't explain why mining these things would be any issue. Cause normally you would just plop a deployer down, it would break the blocks and then you can have another deployer to replace it and it'll work just great. The issue is that in cases like this one or like this next one is that it's gonna break that stem there before breaking this chorus flower. So this will turn into a chorus fruit instead of a flower, meaning that we get less total chorus flowers. So we needed to find a way to have three deployers mine all three of these blocks here at the same time. This is especially tricky because if we just did a normal track like this, the first row of deployers on this set of blocks here, like the ones right in front of the center line would just act as the first row and do the same thing that's happening here. So we need to bring it up over the gap between these two and then drop it back down right on this block so that it drops down to this block and then it goes back up, which is how we got to our final version here, which does that exact thing. You can see that when this starts back up, it will drop off all the items and then go to the center of this block where it mines everything except for that little front area. The reason we can't mine that is because the deployers will break glass blocks or any other block for that matter that is placed there. So that is just going to happen. And it only happens on the front two and the back two chorus flowers. So we're not really losing too much. And honestly, this thing generates more chorus flowers than it does chorus fruit. So we'll just get one extra chorus fruit every once in a while. So you'll see here that this happening again. But if we head up here or to this one, all three of these chorus flowers are going to get mined at the same time, just like this. Another important thing to talk about is why we have two deployers down below here. Both of these are placing down another set of chorus flowers. This is because while the minecart is moving this way, this deployer is going to be the back one. So it needs to place the chorus flower last. And when we're going the other way, this left one here is going to be placing the chorus flowers in front of us. So we kind of need it to do that. I don't know how this has happened. This is kind of cool. I think that's just a, a random tick speed is too high kind of issue. And then this is the final farm. This is just a proof of concept that you could technically double this as high as you want. You'll get diminishing returns though, because once you get back to the bottom, you can see here that most of these are already either stopped growing or have grown to two or three meaning that they won't grow anymore, which is kind of why this farm, this size is the best that you're going to need. You really won't need this bigger one, but you can always have it if you want it. And on this docking station, it will drop off all the coarse fruit in here and all the coarse flowers in here so that it can, with this little system, plant a whole set of new ones. And every once in a while, every hour, when this runs, it will, or every five minutes, it will turn on all of these things and we can speed this up to show you. 
turn on all of these things. Just use water to break all the coarse fruit and push it all down to this belt. There we go. So the water breaks, it stays on for long enough that the chorus fruit all drops over to here. And then these all go, plant a bunch of them. They're going infinitely fast because I have the game tick at max, but normally it would be slower than this. And then it starts back at the start. And this system is also in the schematics in the description. I'm not gonna be building this, uh, but it is fairly simple. It's just a minecart with some deployers set to chorus flower that just place all of them. And we just place it on the and stone blocks, and then we're good to go. For the people building the schematic, there are a few things that you need to remember. The schematic is gonna come with this cart assembler here, and you're going to need to, with a wrench, hold it, right click it, and set it to lock rotation. Otherwise, this minecart is gonna be spinning around as soon as it gets to this water stream here. You'll also need to obviously place in the water here. That includes waterlogging this spruce trap door. This spruce trap door is going to be open by default, and there will be a powered rail above it that, at least for me, popped off as soon as this was placed, so you'll need to come back and place it down manually. The way to do that is to reflick this trapdoor to closed, place the powered rail on top, and then open it. And it should not update. If you place another block next to it, like if I break this glass block, or place a redstone block here, or place another block on top of it or to the side, it will break again and you'll have to set that back up. So make sure you do that at the very end. Another thing for the schematic users is you'll need to place in sticks for each one of these deployers. They will not attack things by default if they don't have an item in their hand. So you'll need to go through all of them, even this middle one, so make sure you don't forget that one, and place a stick in their hands. You'll need nine sticks in total for each of these. And I think honestly, that's the whole setup here. What I would recommend after you place in the schematic and have it like launch off for the first time is to remove this card assembler. That'll make it so that it doesn't uh, place and reconnect every time. It'll save you a bit of lag. And for some cases, the rendering of the deployers and stuff kind of breaks when you do that. So I would just recommend removing the card assembler once you've set the whole thing up and it works consistently. To start building this farm, it is really simple. Uh, the main ingredient you're going to need is glass or whatever other block you use for this. It can be anything as far as my testing is concerned, but we do care about these middle blocks. They cannot be end stone. They can be full glass blocks if you like. I'm just using stone slabs because I think it looks just a little bit better and makes it more obvious that blocks are not being placed there. You can obviously switch those out for anything other than endstone, because if this is endstone, then we're going to have more chorus plants here and it'll mess up the rates of the farm. But again, the main block we're going to need is this white stained glass, and then it's just kind of repetition. So to start the block by block tutorial, we're going to start with the placing areas. So the endstone and spoonstone slabs, we're going to place in eight of these. So two, four, six, eight with a two block gap of smooth stone slabs in between them. So we'll start off stone slabs, end stone, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And then once you get to the eighth one, we're gonna finish it off with some stone slabs. And then we're gonna go two blocks on either side of these and place in glass or whatever block you're using. And then we're gonna make this kind of encased area here. So we're gonna go up diagonally one block from this far right side go up three blocks total, go diagonally up again to a block that is directly above the original, three blocks away, go over one more smooth stone slab, because that'll be the second floor, as you can see there, and then two more glass, and then we're gonna connect it on this other side so that it is symmetrical on either side, and then you can just place in blocks that just go all the way along until you get to the end here, and then we are copying that over to the other side. The last thing we need to do for this first level is to place in the slabs and spawning platform. So we're going to copy this exact same thing. That farm just went again. So we're going to copy this exact same thing from the bottom back up to the top, place in slabs and stone slabs, and just go until we get to the end. Once we've done that, we're just going to copy this little encasement area up to the top here. So we're going to go over one, two, three up blocks tall up one all the way across with glass and there we go we're gonna make a little archway here and then we can just build that all the way along to the other side so that we have a set of tubes here that just goes straight across so now we're gonna place in the redstone circuit 
So come to this right side here and place any block really, and it just has to be able to kind of transmit redstone and have a rail placed on top. We're gonna go two blocks or three blocks out, sorry, and place a controller rail on this third block here. We're gonna go out to the side of that and place redstone torch right next to it. We're then gonna place a temporary block here where we then have two blocks on either side of it, redstone dust on the bottom one, and a pulse extender on this top one. Directly behind it, we're gonna place another block and a pulse repeater. We're gonna set the pulse extender to one minute and the pulse repeater to 10 seconds. This is going to mean that it sends it off. This stays powered for 10 seconds, just so that if the cart is like right here, when this turns on, it doesn't immediately turn off. It gives it a 10 second gap just so that it can go straight away. And then this redstone torch is going to wait a whole minute to power again. So if the cart gets back before that one minute is up, there's no point sending it again. The chorus fruit probably aren't grown just yet, so we might as well wait. So that's just that one minute timer there. And then after these pulse extenders and repeaters, we're going to place redstone dust. We're going to go down diagonally a block here, and we're going to place a pulse extender set to just the normal two ticks. Another block and then a powered latch. On the end of this powered latch, we're going to place a redstone block. This just constantly powers it. And then over here, we're gonna connect up this redstone dust to this powered latch. And just going across like this and connecting it up. This just gives us a redstone clock that when this stops being powered, this will go through and this will turn back off, powering everything here. And then eventually repowering this so that the cart, as you can see, cannot go until the redstone turns back off and goes again. I would recommend two levers here. The first one on this one, just in case you don't want the cart to move anymore, you can flick this on and it just won't move ever. And then another one over here so that if you want the cart to move and you don't wanna wait for the timer, you can flick this and that'll turn on no matter what. Then behind this controller rail, we're gonna place a block, a block diagonally up, and then one more up like this. We're then gonna place rail blocks on both of those and then one more on here. You can then break that and place blocks all the way up so that they are in line with the top of this glass and a roof area. We can then get to placing in the rails itself. So this is pretty simple, but it does require a little bit of thinking. And by a little bit, I literally mean a little bit. We're just going to go to the, on the bottom half, the first end stone block and break a block there. And then we're gonna go one in front of it and break that one too. You're gonna leave a one block gap and then do the same thing. We're going to copy that up to the top, but since we're going backwards, you're going to start at the end stone block and then forward one. So they will be not symmetrical here, which is where the thinking comes in. So pretend that you are the minecart. You're going along this way. So you want the first one and then in front of it. And then once it comes up, it's going to go the other way. So the first one and in front of it. Then we're going to follow the same pattern. So break two, leave one until you get back to the front. Then you can just build a little pathway here that goes up until that block so that the minecart will go straight up in here, hit this wall and then drop down. We can then place in rails all the way along here. They should all connect and make this little V pattern just like this. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom and it should again run into this same exact pattern. And then you can connect it all the way up to this controller rail. Now, once we've gotten to this far rail here, we're gonna place one more block and then we're gonna get soul sand in. This soul sand is used for the bubble elevator to bring the minecart up to the second layer. And then we're going to end it off with another set of smooth zone. And then we're going to build brick walls all the way up until they're in line with this rail here. Right in front of this rail, we're going to place a, another bl glass block. And then on that glass block, we're going to place a spruce trap door. We're going to place a temporary block on top of that, another spruce trap door here, and we can break that temporary block. We're going to want powered rails all along those three blocks that we just placed. We're gonna to wanna to place a redstone block next to the powered rails to power them. And then I would recommend another glass block on the other side, just because water is scary. We're then gonna need to encase this whole thing. So again, water cannot get out by just building down glass on all sides, except for this front one, where we're gonna place a rail on this smooth stone block. This should be completely encased. And now we can fill up this thing with water. You're gonna fill up three empty ones and then fill up this spruce trapdoor one so that when it opened, it will first not pop off this powered rail and water will still be in that block space. We can also get in the little barriers that I have over here to prevent any additional growth of chorus plants that aren't necessary. So we're just gonna kind of build a wall that is one block in 
on either side here. And we're going to do that for every side of the build here. Now we can get started on setting up the cart assembler and deploying system that breaks all of these things. As I mentioned before, I would recommend flicking this lever while you're building it so that it doesn't accidentally turn on while you are building it. First, we have to place in the cart assembler and make sure you right click this number and set it to lock rotation. Again, otherwise this will just make it spin around in that water thing and break. Now we can put in the minecart if you so desire. It should just stop under that cart assembler there and then we're good to go with that. We're going to want to place in two smooth stone blocks here, and then we're going to make a three by three area of deployers all facing downward. Only do the first two for the moment. We're going to place sticks in the filters for all of these. And then once you've done that, you can place in the final three, and then we're putting sticks in here as well. The reason sticks are important is because these deployers are going to be breaking the chorus flowers. By default, deployers won't break anything unless they have an item or like an axe, a pickaxe or something else. It can be sticks in their hand to break it with. So with that, we're going to need to place in sticks into each of the deployers hands. You need to separate it out. If you do a stack of sticks, it'll just pick up the whole stack, which isn't really ideal. It's not going to do anything, but it's just not ideal. So make sure you place in sticks to all of these. And then on each one, you're going to right click them with a wrench to switch them from use mode to attack mode. Then you can hover over them with your engineering goggles to make sure that they're all on attack mode. Then on this center one, we're gonna place a barrel. On the side of the barrel here, we're gonna place a portable storage interface, make sure it's facing outwards. And then on either side of the barrel here, we're gonna place in a deployer. Make sure it's facing the right way, of course. And we're doing that on both sides. These deployers here are going to need the filter for chorus flowers. You don't need to put an item in their hand. And then we're going to need to glue all of these things together. So it's not too difficult. You're going to get this stone block connected to the deployers, connect the deployers all together, and then connect the deployers here with the planting deployers, barrel, and then the portable storage interface to the barrel as well. And then you should be good. Double check that the cart assembler is set to lock rotation, and then we can turn it on. It should all send away, and if we refresh the shaders here, it will start planting anything that it can. As you'll notice, it can't plant everything right away, but it does do some of them. It is recommended, if you have it, to plant as many manually that you can, excuse me, because again, the deployer system doesn't really do well on the first plant through, but if you do it all manually, it should be good and you'll avoid any issues that this thing has planting the very base of the stem because if we go over here you'll see that it doesn't actually break the bottom block here it just replants it on top of it which might mean that the deployers planting it can't actually reach but once we see this go again we'll know that it works we want to also place in the final portable storage interface that'll connect to the other thing so make sure it's in line it doesn't have to be exactly in line as long as it's at the same y level it will connect and it has to be one block away. So the portable storage interface connected to the machine itself is gonna be right here. So just make sure it's one block away and then it will work great. As you can see, this is working. It is mining all the chorus flowers. It is mining all three of them at the same time. So you get the best rates. And if it isn't, double check that the minecart kind of dips here are in the right spot. It should be on the corner of the block in front of where the initial end stone is planted here. And you'll see that here as well. It is directly in front of where the instant is planted. Once we've done that, we can remove the cart assembler so that the controller rail is still there, but nothing else is, and it won't keep disconnecting and reconnecting. And this thing should run pretty much infinitely unless you turn this back on. We can see it go through one more time so that it connects to the portable storage interface. But looking in here, we do see a few and it connected. It doesn't look like it actually delivered anything but that's fine. I think that sometimes happens. As you can see here, it works great. Oh, it's it's because I'm stupid. You need a chute here and not just a barrel connected to it. So when we get the chute in, it will actually pull things from the stored portable storage interface and put it in this barrel here. And that's the entirety of this farm. It wasn't too difficult to make. It's just a lot of block placing and things growing. If you like this farm, be sure to like the video, consider subscribing, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Oh.